Six years ago, Ellis Hammond's entire mission changed. He was a full-time college pastor with vision and passion, but broke. Now a full-time real estate entrepreneur, Ellis is the founder of Kingdom Real Estate Investors, the number one community for faith-driven leaders impacting the world through real estate investing. If you're a kingdom-minded real estate investor or entrepreneur seeking to advance God's kingdom outside the church walls, welcome to the Kingdom REI podcast, where Ellis interviews Christian entrepreneurs and investors focused on advancing God's kingdom through real estate investing. Enjoy the show. Welcome, everyone, to the Kingdom Real Estate Investor Podcast Show. I'm your host, Ellis Hammond, and this is the podcast. If you are a kingdom-minded investor, entrepreneur, and you're serious about using your business, your investments for God's kingdom, and uh, we just bring on some of the best guests, and I'm so pumped about uh, today's guest, Mr. David Tupin. What is up, brother? Dude, everything's good. I appreciate you having me here. So, guys, if you don't know about David, uh, you need to know about David. He started investing at the age of 20 when he bought his first property. I mean, dude, how long have you been an entrepreneur? Since you like out the womb or what? Uh, 13, I started. My first what does that mean, 13? Like, what did you do? Like, what? Uh, how can you become an entrepreneur <laughs> at 13? Like, what are you even selling? Are you allowed to sell at 13? I don't even know if you should be allowed, but I was, <laughs> dude, I was just a kid, man. And uh, I was a really hyperactive kid and my mom was like, you need to get your energy out in some way. You should start knocking doors and mowing lawns. And so before you, before you know it, uh, I had, you know, a whole business running. I was doing the whole neighborhood, had all the riding mowers and all the equipment and everything. And so, uh, yeah, it, it was a good outlet and a good way to make some money and learn how to kind of fend for yourself a little bit and, and, and start something. So it was cool. And then by the 26, how old are you today? I'm 26. I'm 27 in like 10 days. So you've already bought, developed more than $100 million of commercial real estate. You founded kind of a, a, a seems like a startup uh, called the Real Estate Lab, which is a multifamily acquisition software yes, as sir. well, Yep, which is pretty cool. We're going to get in today. So man, I'm pumped to have you. Dude. This is going to be a really exciting show. And I think even just your journey, it's it seems like it's happened pretty quick. Uh, so looking forward to getting, did you go to college by the way? I did barely. <laughs> I I went and I got, I got my degree in finance, but I didn't go to class much. I probably skipped half my classes so I could. Did you work on your business or what? Yeah, so I could buy real estate. Exactly. My my second two years, uh, or my my last two years, it was all literally like I'd go to class half the time, or I'd work like nine till four in the afternoon, and then I would go to class five to nine at night, and then I would come back at work nine to midnight. So it was it was a grind. I love that. Yeah. If you're not following David, go to go to Instagram, go to at real estate Jedi. That's his Instagram tag. And then website for his real estate lab is just realestatelab.com. Uh go go check him out there. But David, before we jump in today, man, we always just start with prayer and want to ask God to kind of bless and uh, as we give him honor on the show and then we'll get going. Is that cool? Cool. Father in heaven, we, we give you thanks for today. Thank you for David. It's just, I, I love God that you've just put a spirit of ambition um, in his in his heart and his mind, even since the age of 13. There's so much um, I know that um, just even represents you, the way that you were a creator, the way that God, that you've taken risk. And so thanks for uh, just e even the way that we're going to see more of you and him today. And I pray that his story and uh, what he's learned in this industry is going to be an encouragement to those listening. I would uh, would you draw us closer to you, cause us to dream, think, and act bigger? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So what was different about you? Like you're in college hustling. Where does that come from? I don't know, man. I, I, I always felt like really different in the way I thought, you know, my, my thought process and the way I was. I never uh, did well in school. I always um, had troubles with that. Like I hated like – you had to sit in a classroom, follow directions, take orders. I'm like, none of this stuff I'm learning, I'm ever going to remember. Cramming for tests and then forgetting everything the day after I take it. Like, right. I just none of this matters to me. What I want is I want to be able to do whatever I want, whenever I want. For me, obviously, and for a lot of people, that's financial freedom, right? We You need to create wealth to be able to do that. And it was a little bit of a discovery process. I didn't, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. My first year of college, I was uh, pre-dental. Uh, that didn't work out, switched to finance. And, and then, you know, within probably the next year, I was just discovering a lot of different ways that you can, you know, go out and create success in the world. And 
I thought it was maybe corporate at first, like investment banking. And then I was like, yeah, it's not me. I need to, I need to be an entrepreneur. So I landed on real estate. It just seemed like the way anybody can do it. You don't need a degree. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. You just need to hustle. So when you were coming, you say you were in college in nine to five, you were working in five to nine, you're going to classes. Like, what were you working on? At first, like the first like four or five months, I was wholesaling. So I did like six or seven single family wholesale deals. And then I hated that. I was like, I hate cold calling. I don't want to be doing this all day. When you stop working, your income stops. And so obviously I'd known about apartments and commercial investing at that time from being in real estate uh, for that short period of time. And I just wanted to do bigger deals. So I really quickly gravitated towards apartments. I said, I'm not wholesaling another deal for the rest of my life, which is untrue because I've wholesaled apartment buildings at this point, <laughs> but I'm not wholesaling single family. Uh, and I started just looking for deals and, and figuring out how does it work? Like how does apartment investing actually work and how do you do it? And that was the biggest thing was like, what is the best way to have confidence as a 20 year old going and buying multi-million dollar properties? And you've got to understand how, how it works and what that process is. And it's, and for me, it all kind of came down to the numbers and, and understanding and knowing the numbers and the financial side of things gave me the confidence to go and buy apartment buildings at that age. Right. And so how did, you know, early on, man, like how did, I know you were partnered with someone, like, was that the journey to get into bigger stuff to find access to capital? Like, where did that come from early on for you to even begin to start doing some of these bigger deals? Yeah, I had a balance sheet partner at first for the first couple deals. And then um, after that, I was in a full-time partnership for a while with a guy, gentleman who's um, had a lot of experience uh, and it definitely helped. And I've had a ton of mentors along the way. And a ton of people who have been, you know, good guides and resources and, and I've learned a lot from and been inspired by. So yeah, you've always got to have like, you've got to have those people that you see doing it. Yeah. Explain for our listeners, when you say you had a balance sheet partner, why that's significant in this space. And then even how you found that person early on. Actually, it's like a, a mutual connection. Somebody I knew um, that I was, they knew that I was getting into real estate and they're like, Oh, I have this friend who's, who's in uh, real estate as well. I flips out of homes. And so we met up and then we just kind of clicked and, and he had a significant enough net worth to go and get, you know, the first couple loans on the first few deals we did. Uh, but that's the main reason, right. Is to be able to qualify for loans as a broke 20 year old, you know, right. paying for my meal plan at college. Yeah. It's like, you know, uh, you need somebody that can, that has the net worth and liquidity to be able to qualify for a, for a bank loan. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. And guys, this is, I mean, this, you know, talk about, what you know, Ellie, you always say, go buy bigger deals. Most people say, well, I can't qualify for that. I'm like, well, give up ownership. Like you don't need to qualify. Yeah. Yep. Like give up ownership. They always say like, this is the watermelon framework. Like you got to give up ownership or equity in order to gain access to speed, to size, to capital. Um, and so you did that early on and then you went into a partnership and what was the point of doing that? That was just acceleration. I mean, it's like, man, we could do more together. I could do bigger deals. Um, the guy had bought probably four or 5,000 apartments prior to our partnership. And then we went on to buy six, seven, 800 apartments together over the period of like a year and a half, two years. And, uh, and it was for me, it was just like, hey, how, how do I um, work with somebody who's done this, you know, who I can learn from, grow with and uh, and and accelerate that process. And so um, did that for a while. Um, and then, you know, we just kind of realized like he was twice more than twice my age, actually. He's in his 50s. And uh, we're just at different places in life, different types of deals we wanted to do, you know, different types of projects, you know, certain things I wanted to focus on were different than what he wanted to focus on. So I ended up selling the company to him and starting my own company about a year and a half ago, almost two years now. Uh, and that's been going great. And I feel like it's allowed me to take off like a rocket ship. So yeah. I think what's cool about that is like, there's, there's always levels and there's stepping stones and like you got to go through this process and everybody goes through it and there's no perfect way to do it. But like, that's, that's kind of my journey so far. So let me ask you this, man. So like you went from, you know, the partnership to being on your own and you're in this business too. There's a lot of hats to wear when you're doing multifamily acquisition, right? There's the financing, there's the underwriting, there's the capital raising. And then there's the legal, like how are you as a sole entrepreneur? Like, are you building a team around this? Like, let's talk me through kind of your process of now coming out on your own and what you maybe learned from the partnership 
Like, I just want to know what you did to set up your business to take down bigger deals, kind of being the sole guy now. Walk, walk me through that. Yeah, well, I've already, I have already have all the connections from the past deals I'd done, you know, in terms of like legal and I have a lot of capital connections raising, you know, two to four million dollars is, is not too difficult at this point. So, you know, ha- having all those connections and ha- building it to that point that made the transition very easy. Uh, and then I do, you know, the, the way I set a lot of things up, like I have third party property management. It It's only a couple hours a week for me to manage the 10 or 12 properties I have asset management wise. It's, it's not a lot because I've got some good systems and processes that I follow. Uh, and so I have an acquisitions guy, helps me underwrite deals. We submit offers. Um, he's out there hunting, sending mailers, letters, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I am at the point right now where I do need a, um, a full-time asset manager and transaction manager pretty soon. So it's just two of us now, but hopefully by the end of this year, next next four to six months, I'll, I'll, I'll be hiring two, probably two more people to the team. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. And that, yeah, I, we, I could, we could get into so much stuff. So then wh- what's up with this, this other company you got going on? The software? Yeah. Uh, well, I built a spreadsheet starting from like very early on in, in my apartment investing uh, career. And uh, it evolved over time into a pretty solid uh, model for syndicators and people that buy apartments, value add stuff. And I put it up on my website and I've, I've been on a lot of podcasts and I talked about it at the time. And um, I sold in like 12 months, I sold over a hundred thousand dollars of worth of a spreadsheet at like <laughs> 250 bucks a pop. And I was like, at $250 a pop, you sold over a hundred grand of it. Yeah, dude. I sold a lot. Yeah. as well over a hundred grand at this point. Um, but that was just like the first year. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. There's a lot of people that need this. And so for me, I'd never intended to sell that. Uh, It's never like, hey, I'm going to go and build a software product out of this. But what I thought was, well, there's a demand for this. There's a pretty large apartment investing industry out there from anywhere from syndicators up to institutional investors. uh, And they all have to underwrite and analyze deals. And it's not just apartments, right? You get into commercial, office, retail, uh, industrial, uh, even land development. There's all these different... um, asset classes and and all of it comes down to numbers, right? Every deal you buy, we buy based on um, the financials. So uh, I figured, hey, let me create a software platform that can do more than a spreadsheet could do alone. You know, and managing that whole process and tracking all the deals you're looking at and helping you send offers. And, you know, you can upload a rent roll and a T12 for an apartment building. Software will read it take that data and put it into the financial model for you and save you a bunch of time. So there's a lot of cool, like, you know, tech applications that we're working on around real estate lab to become the go-to analysis and acquisition tool for commercial investors. Yeah. I mean, you got some stiff competition though. Like what, you know, what is that like to like, how how do you, how are, I'm just curious from an entrepreneurship standpoint, because you're not the only software company in the industry doing this. Like, how are you separating yourself? And especially on those who probably can, who maybe have VC capital, right? Can go spend more money on development and product. Like how do you even compete with that? Yeah, our products just, it's just different. It's like a lot of the ones that are existing, there's one of them is called Argus and they're archaic. Their software is extremely confusing, complex and hard to use. And it's been around forever. Uh, And it's mainly used in commercial um, investing, not apartment investing. So there's a big gap in the market there. And the one or two, uh, I'd say newer uh, products that are out, they only do like a little piece of the process. They do like rent roll T12 parsing and provide some data, but they don't really do the rest of it. We're like an all-in-one acquisitions platform. We do a lot more and we're a lot cheaper. A lot of those products are like five, 600 bucks a month. We're like a hundred to 200 bucks a month. So, you know, our goal is we're, we're going to provide more value for a lot less price. Mm-hmm. And do you have a team or company around that? I do. Yeah. We got eight employees, um, a couple of software developers full-time, uh, I have a CMO. I have three people on the marketing team, a uh, full-time sales guy. So yeah, that, that team is a lot bigger than my, uh, real estate. Is that, team. is that the company that pays the bills? Uh, no, the real estate company is a company that pays the bills. Really? <laughs> we're in startup mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're in startup mode. So I've invested quite a bit of money into the software. And, you know, at this point software is really expensive. I mean, my payroll is like, you know, 50, 60,000 a month. So, but, uh, you know, but we're in growth mode. So that's, that's an investment and that's a risk I took. 
uh, something that I prayed over uh, when I decided to do it because I was taking, I'm taking focus away from my real estate company, which had been exponentially growing year over year, every single year. So I was like, man, am I going to take this risk to build something that could be extremely big or, or uh, potentially a failure, right? Or just average, but takes away a lot of time from my real estate. Uh, or am I going to keep going all in on real estate? And I just, I just felt like it was, it was, it's part of my calling is trying new things and like, and, and innovating more so than just sticking with, you know, the same old. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting, man. That's cool. So you say you, like, all right, this is, let's, let's get a little philosophical. Let's go, let's go there a little bit. So you say you prayed over it. I'm curious to hear more about your faith journey. I know you said in the beginning of the show, yeah, you have Catholic background. Tell me more about that, man. Like even, even kind of where, why you decided, Hey, let me pray over this. Even I just love to learn from you, like how you incorporate your faith or even prayer into decisions like that. Like, why was that something that you went to when making this decision? I, I've always been um, a very religious person. Like I've kind of mentioned to you, I, I grew up in a Catholic family. Uh, it was Catholic schools and church every Sunday and sometimes even during the week, my entire childhood. So I went to Catholic school, kindergarten through 12th grade. And then my college was, uh, it was a Jesuit university but also again, a religious, uh, religious school. I kind of stopped practicing after college. I stopped like going, I feel like I was just overloaded as a kid, but I never lost my faith in God. I felt like more so than going to church. I think it's more important to just have a relationship with God and to pray and, and to hear his guidance. And, you know, you need that in your life. And I think that makes me, you know, it, it gives me a stronger foundation, gives me someone to talk to, uh, about things that, you know, I don't talk to anyone else about. And I think it makes me just that, that faith and that spirit, that foundation makes me a more like loving and giving person. A lot of my mission is like giving back. And so yes. over the years, the more successful I get, the more I like to give and to help yeah. other people. Yeah, and I think that's a big part of the, you know, Christian faith is giving. So can I be honest with you for a minute, man? Like this is part of my story and this is why like I'm curious to kind of hear more too. So like my dad grew up Catholic. I went to Catholic church early on too. And uh, and then, you know, I kind of probably went away from that middle of my life for a long time. And then kind of what I kind of found my way back into church was more like non-denominational and, and and that's where my my faith really came alive it was kind of through a ministry in college and i remember going back to my dad and kind of trying to talk about faith and whatnot and and it just never unfortunately we that conversation never uh, for for many reasons he was always kind of closed off but my view of of the catholic church or even sometimes catholics and this is why I'm like, dude, let's just have an honest conversation. So uh, if you're Catholic out there, just know it's because I'm curious, not because I have anything against being it's Catholic. It's with love. It's with love. It's with love. This is what I'm trying to understand. <laughs> I want, and I want, and I, I feel like David is really speaking this great language here. I want to understand. But like, it's been my view, like the Catholics are typically more kind of rigid where like even hearing from God or hearing the spirit or in bringing the spirit of God into that relationship, that's, that was probably something that kind of drew me away from Catholicism. So is that... Do you, have that been your experience as well? Or even as you think about talking to God or hearing from God, is that something that's active in your relationship? Like, like the real spirit of God in your life? I'm just curious to kind of hear your, your view on that. I think the Catholic church, I think there's a lot of people that they, it's like checking a box. It's like you go to church, but then you can do whatever you want. And they don't really have maybe like a, a very strong yeah. faith outside of that. I mean, that's all churches, bro. Like, yeah, yeah that's I mean, true. that's, that's yeah. a lot of church, right? It's like you're going yeah. through the motions, but like, yeah, that's all church. It's not just Catholic yeah. church, but um, yeah, a lot of Catholic is, you know, a lot of people that are Catholic is very rigid. And, you know, for, I guess for me personally, like, you know, I, I don't know if I necessarily like feel like I always hear God, but I know like, I know he listens when I talk to him. I don't know. Like I said, that's kind of like my, at least how my, I view my faith. Like, yeah, you know, I, I know he provides and he blesses us in yeah. a lot of ways. Yeah. No, it's cool, man. I think part of this is just some of the stuff I'm going through right now. Like some of the stuff I'm learning and as I'm listening and studying scripture where I'm learning more about the spirit of God and, you know, Jesus says he'll send us a helper. And so even as I hear people, like I talk, like, you know, you say, I pray, I talk to God. So do I. I think the thing, man, that's maybe been 
lacking in my life for, for a long time is like, is God talking to me? And I think it's really clear when we listen to Jesus speaking the Bible that God wants to speak directly to us through his, through the Holy Spirit. And so that's why I was just wondering, like, if that's something that you figured out, even, even coming from the Catholic background, uh, but maybe we're in similar spots of like still learning, like what it really looks like to communicate and hear from God. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I, I guess I don't think about that a ton, but yeah, you kind of hit it on the head. I think we are in a similar spot yeah. and. I don't know if, the, I don't know what, I don't know what the answer is necessarily, but yeah. you know, maybe it's like, you've got to figure out what's the best way to be receptive and always thinking about it so that you can like see the sign. Yeah. You know? Well, I just think, man, too, like as, as entrepreneurs, as guys that are in this business, like, you know, the fact that you prayed about that decision, you, re, you know, deep down God cares about that, right? Like, you know, deep down God wants to give you guidance and yet i think how la how little we actually rely on like how little we actually do are influenced by god in some of those decisions i think is my point and it's why i just love this show man it's why i ask these questions because i'm like i'm just trying to like how do i help me and you and all these other kingdom-minded people out there actually listen to god on what he wants to do with our businesses and our lives man because i think god wants to do amazing stuff through entrepreneurs like, I think God wants to use entrepreneurs as the main agents for kingdom advancement in this generation. And I'm like, the problem is very few are listening to them. Mm. And I'm like, man, well, let's, how, do, how do we listen? Like, that's why I'm asking you the question. Like, how do yeah. you listen? Because I, I want to learn how do I better listen? Because I'm like, dude, I'm a terrible listener. All I do yeah. is talk. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I've necessarily figured it out yet, but yeah. I do agree with you. I think entrepreneurs are, are can be and are are blessed enough to have the ability to be some of the best, you know, givers and, and, you know, push and advance that type of stuff forward. You know, it's like, we, we think outside of the box, we do what a lot of people can't do. Uh, we have the means to be able to give and bless others. And I think if you have the means, you have a responsibility to do that. Um, and, you know, I think for me, at least that's, that's part of what God's mission is for me. It's like, how do I, how do I amass a lot of wealth, so that I can help a lot of people. Yeah, I love that, man. I love that. Well, uh, let's keep chat. I mean, there, that's such a good dialogue. I want to continue that too with you, man. Maybe offline too. And, and as as I'm learning, we can we can learn together in that. Uh, so what's 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 important to you right now? Like, what? It, I mean, are you single? I'm single. Yeah. So, like, what is your drive? Why? Like, why work this hard, man? Like, I, I you know, what I mean, like, connect that for me. Like, what are you trying to build, and why are you trying to build it? Yeah. Um, I know it's an interesting question. Cause like this, this year to me is the year that I feel like I found the most balance in my life. Like mm -hmm. my first three or four years. Um, I mean, and I know a lot of entrepreneurs go through this, but like, it was it. Like I, I, I worked so hard. There would be nights I'd literally just drive home after working from like nine to midnight. And I, I literally would like break down in tears because I'm like so lonely and have just worked so tirelessly. And it's like, dude, like, why am I even doing this? Like, what? like, man, but then, but then I, you know, came out on the other end and created a, a, a lot of success through that hard work and finally saw like the fruits of my labor and and now I'm finally you know I'm about five five and a half years six years in and I'm like okay you know I'm finally starting to find some balance I'm really focusing on um, my health uh, you know it, relationships and other areas you know family that type of stuff like you know trying to find that balance and not just be a workhorse because you can't just do that uh, all the time right it, you know it doesn't create a great a great uh, balance in life so you know figuring that out still, but it's, it's, it's going well. Uh, but my, I mean, what's my, my purpose? Uh, and I don't mean I, that. I guess my point is like, what, you know, what's, what is driving you right now? Right. And so is it, is it kind of a lifestyle dream you have in mind? Right. Like what is the kind of underlying, like, this is what I'm going after. And here's kind of why I want to go achieve it. Yeah. I think, I think it's like twofold. Well, maybe threefold. One, I want to be able to give my family like an unbelievable life. Like I want to make sure my family never has, not only never has to worry about anything, but they could also do a lot of the incredible things that I've been able to do myself. Yeah. Um, second, I want to uh, create an insane amount of wealth so that I can help and bless other people. What is insane amount of wealth? A billion. Like I want a billion net worth. Like you want a billion cash or like, what do you mean? No, a billion? billion net worth. Yeah. Okay. Like, you know, probably 
probably 100 200 million cash and the rest like i could okay buy. yeah no okay. so i want like a what large i want a large rest? yeah i want a, i want a lot of well so but that, that's only gonna help me bless yeah. other people yeah. you know um okay. and then and if but how I, does yeah, a billion dollar net but let me ask you this let me ask you this let's sure. let me dive in it how does a billion dollar net worth help you bless people like i'm this is a serious question i'm not this is i won't i just let's flesh this out so you and i both understand people in this call understand like that's only your net worth though like you can't give net worth like how does a billion dollars help you bless other people i mean a billion dollar net worth dude you can imagine that cash flow on that has to be <laughs> i mean i'm you know <laughs> I'm only a couple percent of that at the moment. And I'm like, you know, already I know like I can do something. So so that's tied to maybe then cash that that's tied to a yeah, part. Yeah. Of if I'm, if I have a billion dollars. worth and I'm not making at least like 50 million a year, you know, or hundred million a year, like I'm doing something wrong. Okay. So, um, you know, so that, I guess that that's part of it. So, I, you know, help uh, being able to give, um, has always been, even since I was a kid, I've always been, uh, I've always liked helping and volunteering and giving and, um, you know, especially with like kids and young people, I want to teach a lot of young people that being an entrepreneur is, you know, a possibility. Um, you know, you don't have to just go to college and go through the motions. Uh, but finally, you know, I want to live with my life. However, I want to live it. You know, I want, you know, that I, I, I want, I like all the things too. I like the cool cars and, and the planes. I, I'm a, I'm a, almost a pilot, uh, bought my first plane. So I'm like, you know, I, I you bought a plane. It. Bought a plane. Where do you park it? Uh, I got to get a hangar. I'm probably going to buy a hangar. I have some land that at an airport near me, uh, but I, I want to buy. You're hangar. in Austin? I'm in Austin. Yeah. 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 So I got to I gotta build a hangar or buy a hangar or rent one. Dude, but if you're worth a billion, you're not going to fly yourself around, dude. You're going to have somebody fly you. Oh, yeah, exactly. Well, that's <laughs> the goal eventually. That's the goal, right? So, um but in the meantime, you know, I will be able to fly myself around. And that's, that's part of the tie into like the freedom. I want to be able to go wherever, do whatever, work from anywhere in the world on just a laptop. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've gotten that part down. So now it's like, all right, how do we keep, how do we keep leveling it up? Mm -hmm. Dude, I love that, man. I love, I love the, just how big you're dreaming. And I know that as you and God align too, you're going to do huge things, man. So it's, this is what I'm talking about. I, I, I want, I just love talking to entrepreneurs like yourself, man. Like, cause you, you've given yourself permission to really think and dream big. Now, is that aligned with God? I, it's only for you to answer, right? But I, what I love is that I think most, and this is why I think he got wants to use entrepreneurs because we feel like we have the, like, we don't have to go, we don't need to ask anybody for permission. Like, can we go dream? Can we go build? Like you, you, yeah. ha you feel that, you know, that you can go do that. And man, I just think like there's power in that. And now we line that ambition up with, uh, with the Holy Spirit and with God's guidance, man, imagine what we can do. Right. So anyways, I'm just pumped to know you. I'm pumped to see what God does in your life and excited to, um, just continue to maybe, maybe heck we'll partner with something. Where are you buying deals at right now? Yeah, absolutely. Would love to meet. Um, I buy deals mainly in Texas, central Texas, okay. uh, around like Austin, San Antonio, and then i um, back in Michigan, which is where I'm from. Got it. I like Austin. We own a, we, we own a deal in Austin. You guys buy, did you buy, have you bought deals in Dallas? Are you buying any deals in Dallas? Uh, I've done a, one deal in Dallas. Got a deal in Fort Worth right now that I'm selling as well. What's your criteria in terms of kind of multifamily assets? Dude, I'm, I'm really just opportunistic at the moment. Uh, I'm doing a lot more joint venture type deals, you know, some syndications, but mainly like JVs. So I'll do anything from 20 to 200 units and business model is is there like a cash out refi and hold or is it just a could be a flip kind of what is your bread and butter or do you have a bread and butter i'm i'm just a value investor so like i i, I look for the good deals like whatever i can whatever i can steal or get for like a great price uh i'll do it and if it happens to be a good flip or hold um i bought a, a 16 unit um a townhome uh, community in austin uh, and I converted them to condos and then we're going to sell them off individually as condos. So that's like a very unique, like, mm -hmm. you know, not, not the typical like syndication model type of deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just JV that with the, me and a couple buddies. So, you know, I'll, I'll really do anything as long as it's at least, you know, three to $5 million project when there's a good equity spread in it or some cash flow to be made. Yeah. 
Cool. Well, man, besides kind of your Instagram, which I threw a real estate Jedi out, out earlier, where, where do folks go to kind of learn more about you, follow your journey or learn more? Yeah, my real estate website is Tupin Holdings. Real Estate Lab, as you mentioned, dot com is my, uh, that's my software company. And then uh, Instagram is the best way. Uh, hit me up, shoot me a DM. I love helping people and getting other people in the space. I, I was inspired by other people to get into this space. So um, it's only right that I give back. So uh, yeah, go follow me on Instagram and hit me up. Would love to chat. I'm following you right now. Real Estate Jedi. Oh, I'm already following you. Um, Let's go. Dude, you got a hundred thousand followers. You don't even create a whole bunch of stuff. That's insane. I don't. I don't. I I, that, I struggle with the Instagram, man. Like, so I, how do you get a hundred? Did you buy those followers or what? Uh, I advertise a lot of stuff. No, no, but a lot of them is just growth over time, dude. Like, I've I've been on just a lot of podcasts, go to a lot of events, a lot of networking. Uh, you know, it's just been it's been a good couple of That's years. That's insane, man. Yeah, my team sends out like the maximum number of dms every single day from my account hey uh, there's a girl on your instagram who's that there is i don't think there is a girl on my instagram oh that's way back uh, <laughs> that's, that's, hey. that's that's one that 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 has not been taken down yet bro that's that's why you know you don't create enough man because that was like two that was like three scrolls and i'm like oh yeah, you got a yeah, girlfriend man yeah. so you know hey i don't create enough yeah we put most of our effort into if you that's go to real killing, that's killing your game man that's why you're still single because girls get you know people are going to your instagram like oh this good looking guy i know he's, he's got a girlfriend he's taking <laughs> he's taking i know he's taking <laughs> he's taking uh, man we uh, need to fix that guys girls if you're listening he's not taking okay not so taking. don't 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 be scared to reach out. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, hit me up, please. That's oh, great. man. Dude, I've loved this. This has been so much fun, man. I appreciate you coming and hanging out. Agreed. Agreed. Likewise, man. Thanks for having me on, and I like what you're doing, so keep doing it. Yeah. Hey, guys, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, make sure you screenshot this this episode or wherever you listen to this and put this on Instagram. Put this on social media, LinkedIn, and tag David, tag myself. Uh, we would love your support in letting people know there is a platform that's trying to engage with other believers in this space of investing in entrepreneurship and want to talk with you about that. So do us a do us a help, man. Do the kingdom a help in sharing this this podcast. Appreciate it, everybody. We'll see you next week. Cheers.